I've been an architect for quite a long time. Uh, I'm 75. I have spent most of my practice doing construction uh, and organizing construction jobs. The essential point at the core of the way I think about architecture is that the most fundamental aim of anything that you do in the environment has to do with wholeness. Wholeness is a very murky word. Uh, some people think it's a funny word. Some people wonder what it means, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, my own opinion, and I think a growing, a growing uh, opinion among environmental builders, is that um, every step you take of any kind, large or small, has to increase or deepen the, the part of the environment that you're working in. It, you cannot just drop a building there, no matter how beautiful or magnificent. It doesn't make sense. You have to do the thing which is, does the most to gradually pull the strings together of the environment where you are active. That is not, is not recognized as a focal point. Whether you're an architect or a builder or a planner, people seem to tend to pay attention to their projects. Understandably, but it isn't a good thing to do. It's not a good thing for any of us to do. So the question is, where, where is some insight of this kind going to come from? What, act, what actions can one take as professionals in a way that will actually hold things together? Now, the most difficult thing is where, where does the whole come into play and what is it that we need to do that will actually deepen that wholeness, make it work, and so forth. And finally, most important, what are the means that one could use or should use to make this happen? Now, I mean, this is the reason why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a building contractor, a licensed building contractor in the States, as well as being an architect. And I find, I would say almost unequivocally, I will state that design as the object of architecture seems to me fatuous, not, not something that is going to really improve the environment. Of course, we all know that there's just too much egotism involved in architecture. But, but the question is, what is, what is the, the, the medium or the mode in which one can work things through? Now, if you are in charge of a building project, I'm, I'm not talking about building or being in charge as an architect. I'm talking about being in charge of the building process. At that point, the shit hits the fan. Because for architects who, who have not had that kind of experience, they really don't have enough knowledge or feeling for construction. You can read about it in manuals all you want. But the question is, can you arouse the coherent action of a group that are actually building a project? Now, I'm fairly radical in these things. I do not um, I do not work through building drawings, I mean working drawings. As far as possible, I leave that to one side altogether. My aim as a builder 
is to create adaptations day by day in what is happening out on the, on the building site. Well, first of all, you have to have a relationship with a building department that will permit this kind of activity. And it, I, I, I don't, not saying it in a humorous vein, I mean it. Because actually it does require that if you, if you make friends with sensible people in the building department, they will, and if they see that you're doing good work, they will allow you to keep on doing it. And they're not going to ca cause you problems. If you're an architect who's trying to get away with something, I, I know that sounds a bit sinister, but I don't, don't mean that it's necessarily evil. It's just stupid. We, we, we need a milieu in which people are able, you know, let's say you have a spot of a certain foundation. You move the foundation. You, I mean, you, you, you've, you've, put, you've brought a foundation to a particular point. And you suddenly notice that it would be much, much better if the superstructure of the, of the building, the, if the whole thing, was to go out by one and a half meters, let's say. That sounds a little bit like anathema, even though, of course, there are change orders. But that, that's already f sort of fooling around with the process and not really to the, to the key. If you want to make a building that is a beautiful building, it is almost categorical that you have to keep thinking on your feet, whether it be changing the size of a window from that to that, if that is a better thing to do, or whether you want to uh, raise the height of a major building wall in the, in the building. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a small thing or a big thing. As, as, a, as a worker, you need to, to watch the harmony of the whole building as it evolves. And your responsibility is to make sure that that happens. And that you are, in effect, coordinating and harmonizing, if you want. A strange word there. But just you want to gather the strands together so that better buildings come out of your activity. It's very difficult to say where this is. I mean, how, how can this come into being as a realistic and practical activity? How does it dovetail with the local government? How does it dovetail with various restrictions that may have to do with water, drainage, whatever it happens to be? But this needs to be a coherent activity where you effectively, as a builder, are doing what a painter in oil paint does with oil paint. I'm saying oil paint rather than watercolor, because in, with oil paint, you can keep on putting paint down, of course, sometimes removing it, but even, anyway, you can just simply build up layers, so you, you have the opportunity to keep doing that. And if you're skillful, you can make a beautiful thing, and if, if you are patient and skillful. And the most basic rule of thumb, if you're building under those conditions, is that you, obviously you are on site, let's assume most, most days, not necessarily every day, but you're in charge of this a crew of, could be anything. Uh, the project that I'm going to show uh, in a minute, we had uh, 200 men on site, round the clock, for eight months, building a $10 million project in Japan. And you have to be mentally active every day. Of course, you can get into the most horrendous squabbles and so on and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, it's your job to take care of those things. The important thing is, and I don't know how many of you that are in the room actually know this, what I'm going to say. 
if you were doing what, what I've just said, if you just if you were engaging in this kind of activity, would you be confident that the thing will get better and better and better, day by day, week by week, month by month? Do you know how to do that? Because that's the critical issue. Not can you draw some pretty lines in in uh, in CAD or in hard line pencil, whatever it happens to be, that's really not the issue because that's already so far away from the possibility of creating harmony in a building that it is just a fucked up mess. If you want to keep on drawing and doing your CAD thing and so on and so forth, you cannot get a realistic, beautiful, deeply adapted structure, which under almost all circumstances will be different in many ways from whatever it was that was in your head at the time you began, for you and the client and so forth. The arrangements that I usually have with clients is to develop a, a, a good enough relationship with them so they trust me and they know but if they have a good talk with me, we will come out of it making some improvement. And if that happens every day or every third day or whatever, and you keep on doing that for a few months or a few years, whatever it is, then you get results. Now, do you know that? As opposed to Here's the, here's the working drawing, drawn out in all its finery and all its abstractness and so forth, and you just build the damn thing regardless because you don't have the time or you don't know enough to keep changing it. So, I mean, this is a real question to you. We have coined... Uh, a distinction between two systems of production that we call system A and system B. System A is a system which permits and encourages that sort of activity that I was just talking about. System B is the method of architectural production that is probably followed by 80%, if not more, of the major owners, developers, builders, and so forth. System B is the most bleak <coughs> effect on the environment, whether you're talking about in England or in California or in India or wherever it is. There, there is no way around changing from system B to system A. If you want to get good results with buildings. Most of my projects are not in England. I mean, I've only once built a building in England. And if you want to see what that looks like when it's executed, you're welcome and I'll, I'll give you the address. It's, it's in a place called West Dean in Sussex, and it's a visitor center for the College of West Dean and the Victorian Gardens there. It is a relatively small-scale project, but it's not that small. I've experienced many, many times, whenever I happen to be over there and t taking somebody in there, they... You can laugh if you want. But basically they gasp. Because, well, we had a, for instance, head, the head of, the head of uh, Strathclyde uh, uh, Architecture School up in Scotland. He's an Italian urban planner. Very, very wonderful man. He went to, to look at the building and he said, to us afterwards, that he was just mind-boggled, that it was possible 
to build a building as like the one that he had just seen. And yet, Christ was held firm. The thing is genuinely beautiful. Now, very you can't say something is beautiful unless it actually produces in you the emotion of beauty. So, I suppose if I took, for example, let's say MI6, um, is that beautiful? Have a good laugh. Some of you are just having one. Um, why, why do we allow this to go on in, in our profession? What is the reason? Now, I'd like to speak some more about this, but I think that's a, just a sort of brief introduction to my thoughts and my activities. What time have I got? Let's see, it's now seven. You're fine, Chris. Sorry? You're fine. Keep going. No, I think no, you I've, want been, to... I've been told that I'm going to be kicked out. At seven. <laughs> <laughs> I, that doesn't mean I will, but, but, but I, I, I do like to be I polite.